So we've made it to the end of June, and for many, it looks a lot different than June 2020. Today, COVID-19 vaccines are a reality for many, and so too may be a summer outdoors. But let's do that responsibly. And as June 2021 ends, there are a number of things that we'd like to end too. Things like child abuse and COVID-19 itself. I'm Theodore Henry, welcoming you to Jamaica Magazine for Wednesday, June 30. Let's meet back right here after the news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh, and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, June 30, 2021. There have been no homicides or shootings in Norwood since the Zone of Special Operations, Zoso, was declared for the St. James community on June 20. Prime Minister Andrew Holness gave the update in a statement to Parliament yesterday. As the clear phase of the strategy takes primacy at this stage, the security forces will continue their operational pursuits to remove the criminal elements and influence from the space. This phase will see the continuation of internal security operations to rid the zone of illegal weapons and ammunitions and contraband. The Prime Minister says the Social Intervention Committee will meet on July 1 to coordinate evidence-based interventions targeting children and young adults. This follows dialogue with various subcommittees of the Citizen Security Business Group, during which proposals were made for parenting and after-school programs. In furtherance of the priority placed on children and youth, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information and the Heart Trust NSTA have made a commitment to intensify their collaboration to increase the training of this target group by establishing more training institutions within proximity to the area. In the meantime, Mr. Holness says the Joint Command will continue to provide a periodic 10-day report of activities in the zone for review by the National Security Council. Jamaica's poverty rate dipped to an all-time low of 11% for the 2019 calendar year, battering the 12.6% in 2018. This marks the lowest level in 12 years and the second lowest in 32 years. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says government policies prior to COVID-19, which resulted in consecutive economic growth and low inflation, contributed to the decline in the rate of poverty. He was speaking in Parliament on Tuesday. This Madam Speaker underscores the importance of maintaining policies that favor job growth, economic expansion, and macroeconomic stability as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, even as we broaden and deepen the social safety net. The finance minister says a disruption in this downward trend is expected for 2020 based on the pandemic's impact on the economy and social development. This data will be provided by the Planning Institute of Jamaica by the end of this year. In the meantime, Minister Clark says the 2019 data shows that the poverty reduction was not as strong in rural areas. He says the social component of the Serve Jamaica program is expected to address this through interventions such as the River Training Program by the National Works Agency. We will need to continue to emphasize programs such as those that lead to a reduction of poverty in rural areas. The good news is that industries such as construction and agriculture which absorb important segments of the labor market, have been resilient and offer bright hope for the future. And tourism is rebounding, which will provide a boost to incomes. Also coming out of Parliament is government's plan to bridge the learning loss caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The National School Learning and Intervention Plan has been crafted to identify and address learning gaps and support schools. Education Minister Favel Williams says the program will be administered under four components, focused on overall national school learning, summer school, extra lesson classes, and homework intervention. Madam Speaker, the Recover Smarter National School Learning and Intervention Plan will allow for an improvement in the academic performance of students enrolled in the program over the summer period and during the school year to come. It will also provide academic enrichment activities for students through its intervention framework. Minister Williams says approximately 120,000 students have not been able to consistently engage in learning since the onset of COVID-19, giving rise to learning gaps. 
The National School Learning and Intervention Plan will be implemented via face-to-face -face and online classes. Schools will also use the Ministry's standardized diagnostic tools and the school-based assessment test to assess students. The Government of Mexico has increased its planned donation of AstraZeneca vaccines to Jamaica from 35,000 to 65,000 doses. The vaccines arrived today at the Norman Manley International Airport. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Kamina Johnson-Smith says Jamaica and Mexico signed an agreement for the increased vaccine supply to address the island's urgent need for the doses. We, of course, therefore express our even greater appreciation to Mexico for their generosity. And we note in particular that although Foreign Minister Ebrar and Deputy Minister Delgado are both at G20 meetings this week, they ensured that the arrangements were in place to be completed this week. Transport Minister Robert Montague says plans to upgrade Jamaica's aviation system are advanced. These include introducing a satellite-based navigation platform that will reduce the distance between aircrafts from 40 to 5 miles, allowing for more planes to be routed. Minister Montague says this will increase our earning capacity from air services. At the same time, the upgrading of Jamaica's three international airports is ongoing, with resources being programmed for expansion. This is to reposition them to meet the growing demands for travel. And finally, the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, has issued a stern warning to party promoters to abide by the established COVID-19 protocols. The call comes ahead of the relaxation for the entertainment industry to host events with limited patrons under restricted guidelines. This takes effect tomorrow, July 1. In a statement, Mayor Delroy Williams says all efforts will be implemented to preserve the gains made by the country to control the spread of the virus. He says the corporation will commence the renewal and issuance of annual and special amusement licenses in keeping with the directive of the government. The KSAMC will also be checking events and places of amusement licenses to ensure they are compliant and operating within the law. Mayor Williams urges promoters to make use of the waivers and incentives being offered to secure a quick recovery to the creative economy and the thousands of persons it employs. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Is your facility approved for COVID-19 testing? The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, through the Janica Accreditation or Pre-Accreditation Approval Program, validates labs and point-of-care testing facilities such as medical centers. Accreditation safeguards the quality of test results and consumer well-being. Use a Janica accredited or PAP approved facility for your tests and let's defeat COVID-19 together. Contact the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation. Confirming competence, providing confidence in the marketplace. At some point, to some people, COVID-19 may have seemed like an endless fate. But something began, bringing hope of ending the pandemic stint. Vaccination. As we end June, take a look at what has led to the beginning of the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, right here in Jamaica. On Monday, March 8, 2021, an atmosphere of relief was almost palpable among Jamaicans waiting to access COVID-19 vaccines that would offer protection against the highly contagious and deadly coronavirus. This as the first batch of vaccines arrived on the island that afternoon. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton, and Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith were at the Norman Manley International Airport to receive the shipment. 50,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines arrived as a gift from the government and people of India. This precedes the majority of vaccines procured by the Jamaican government with a total of 4 million doses scheduled to arrive in the country in the coming weeks. Within 48 hours of the arrival of the first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines, the Ministry of Health and Wellness began administering the vaccines to health workers on the front line in the battle against COVID-19 and to vulnerable Jamaicans across the country. All across Jamaica, primarily in our healthcare facilities, vaccines are being administered. So it is a historic day and it represents a major shift in the approach now that vaccines are available. And we believe 
could signal the beginning of the end. As long as we have the supplies and the people are willing to take the vaccine, the beginning of the end for any significant threat that this COVID-19 virus represents. Public health nurse Marcia Thomas Yetman was the first Jamaican on the island to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Nurse Thomas Yetman, who has been serving the profession for up to 27 years and is employed to the Southeast Regional Health Authority, CERA, was among a group of 40 persons inoculated with the AstraZeneca vaccine at the Good Samaritan Inn in Kingston on March 11. Former Prime Minister Bruce Golding and his wife Lorna, as well as former Prime Minister PJ Patterson, were also among those who got the jab on the first day. They are encouraging other Jamaicans to do the same. Nurse Thomas Yetman says in the moments leading up to receiving the vaccine, she was nervous as she has a fear of the needle. This vaccine is safe. Thousands and thousands of people across the world have been vaccinated with this vaccine. And um, they're still alive, they're still doing well, and compl complications are minimal based on what we have been told from studies done. And so I would encourage persons to sign up and get your vaccines as soon as it's available to you. I am recommending all Jamaicans, especially like me, the vulnerable, to be vaccinated. I'm begging you. Today is my first shot, thank God. It's a relief. It was an awesome experience. The organization here is fantastic. Keeping also with so all of the protocols, so the social distancing, the mask, and of course the sanitizing. The shot does not hurt. Little burn does not hurt, no more than any other vaccine. And it's the start of freedom. And it's time for us to get back to normal life, to exercise, etc. And this is the start. Not over. The journey has to wait for the second shot, but it's time. And I think it's a relief for the country that we have got to this point and you have another piece in the armory. Doesn't mean we can stop masking, social distancing, sanitizing, but now you have your fourth. Day one of the vaccination program continued across some 70 sites within the four regional health authorities, where some 3,280 persons within the vulnerable groups received the first dose of the vaccine. Healthcare workers in St. James turned out in large numbers to take the first of the two jabs of the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm happy to lead by example. It was a smooth process. I was ready for it. I've been looking forward to the vaccine reaching. I'm very excited and I'm so happy that I'm here today and I have received my first dose of the vaccine. Community health aide Philip Dehaney is included among the first set of persons in Jamaica to be inoculated against the coronavirus. Being a member of the health sector, I decided to lead by example, took the vaccine. So far, there's nothing just like a regular flu shot. There's nothing really much to fear. March 10, Exactly one year after the first case of the coronavirus was confirmed in the country, Jamaicans are feeling relief at the start of the program to give citizens access to vaccines against the coronavirus. Jamaica's COVID-19 vaccination plan is still in effect. If you wish to make an appointment, please do so online by visiting moh.gov.jm or by calling 888-663-5683. Vaccination still a keep. Go get your jab today. So we've been talking a lot about endings and we do realize that some things ending are really needed and welcoming. As we said earlier, these include child abuse. Now, there's a government entity that has this target as its mandate. Let's see one of the CPFSA's latest interventions. It's no secret. Child abuse remains a stain that many perceive as irremovable because of its prominence, silence from witnesses, and its broad global impact. But agencies like the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, are working twice as hard to remove that notion. 
The agency's latest effort, a child abuse community drive through to sensitize citizens and awaken voices and actions to end even the smallest idea of abuse towards any child. A message that says to the citizens all over Jamaica that it needs all hands on deck to care for our children. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency has a mandate for children who are deemed to be in need of care and protection. These are children who have been abused, abandoned, neglected or otherwise at risk. And we do interventions based on the several programs that we have. Through its child abuse community drive through the CPFSA has engaged members of several communities in St. Anne. The message was delivered through public speaking, flyer distribution and other engaging activities. If you feel like a child is being hurt, you have to report. We don't want you to get the facts. We don't want you to investigate. We don't want you to come with evidence. We want you to tell us so that we can roll out and do what we have to do. And so that's why we're trying to say to the persons in St. Anthony, you have to report. The engagement is garnering partnerships with power movers of our nation. The initiative has been welcomed and joined by members of the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sisoka, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, and the Ministry of Justice, among others. Our service partners are on board. They have come out to support us, and that is the message we want to send. So we have persons from the police, the Sissoka Department, persons from Restorative Justice, from the Child Guidance Clinic, from the Probations Department, from the hospital. And so it is saying to the wider society, look at how we as service partners have to collaborate because caring for a child has so, so many dimensions. Every year we partner with the CPFSA on different initiatives, whether it is parenting program or directly having to do with children. It's things like these at our department Community Safety and Security is very interested in partnering with it. Of course, solving the issue of child abuse goes far beyond what these agencies are doing. Accountability continues to rest on the shoulders of a much larger Jamaica. And I want to also speak to the prescribed persons, the persons who by virtue of their employment have to treat the children. So all the guidance counselors, the teachers, the doctors, the dentists, the librarians, you are prescribed persons. Meaning by law, you don't have a, cho a choice. It's not that you wonder, should I or should I not? The normal man may, may wonder, but we as prescribed persons, we must. And if we fail to do so, we are failing our children. Children want something that they can look up to and aspire to be. And when they see that there are so many persons behind them willing to assist them with getting all that they need, then it is a good look for our children. And I just want to encourage you parents to know where your children are at all times. It doesn't matter if you're going to leave them with a friend or anybody. Just know where they are. Keep checking on them. Build a communication, break that gap, so that you, you're able to reach them whenever they are having a situation. And even if you're not a parent, guidance counselor, a teacher or doctor, there's still a part for you to play in ending the plague of child abuse in our country. Volunteer at a child abuse prevention program. The CPFSA's initiative is a great start. Understand what child abuse is and know the signs. Unexplained injuries are not the only signs of abuse. Look out for signs of depression, fear of adults, or even inappropriate sexual behaviors. Teach children their rights. Help them to understand that they have the right to be safe. That way, they'll be more likely to report an offender and less likely to think that the abuse was their fault. And report suspected cases of abuse or neglect. You do not have to leave your name. You do not have to leave your information unless you choose to. You will, be, you will remain anonymous, but what it will do, it will give even one child a chance. Children who are hearing, you can also self-report. If it is that you begin to feel uncomfortable with any adult, there is a way that you can call and you can self-report. So, the mission is clear. Working together to end child abuse in our island home. Break the silence, report child abuse. That's the only way we can help our children. We have one aim and one aim only to protect the Jamaican child.
And after that drive to end child abuse, let's continue on the road. See what that did there? All right, so let's get our tires changed and ready to hit the road again. I have absolutely no idea what this is or what it's even used for. But today on Autospot, I'm going to be learning all about tires. And who knows, I might even end up changing one myself. Tire is a ring-shaped component that surrounds the rim, which helps to cushion the road feel and offer traction and stability of the vehicle. You have all-purpose tires, which you can, can use in all terrain. You have wet tires. For wet tires, it's for like wet road condition. You can't use a dry tire in the wet season. You'll get slippage. For the tire to be completely functional, you need the rim, you need air to be inflated in the tyre to get it to the correct air pressure so that it's suitable for road condition. A cold tyre is when the temperature inside the tyre is reduced to like normal road temperature. At that time is the correct time to check the air pressure within the tyre to give you an accurate reading. For the hot tyres now is when you're driving on the road for a long duration of time and the heat inside the tyre builds up and increase the pressure inside the tire. Tire inflation is the pressure inside the tire, which can be in kilopascal, bars, or PSI. There's an instrument called the tire pressure gauge, which I have here with me, you use to take the tire pressure. I can demonstrate for you. First, we have to remove the dust cap from off the tire. Place the tire pressure gauge on the tire valve and it automatically push out the tire pressure gauge and give you the correct reading. The driver still needs to, to play a big role in the safety of the vehicle on the road. Now we see a lot of vehicles coming into our premises at our body shop and we see a lot of accidents that, that could have been easily prevented. People texting, people not paying due care and attention when they're on the road. Now, Jamaica had over 370 odd deaths last year on the road. The big target to get it under 300 this year, and that can easily be achievable if people just pay a bit more care and attention when they're driving on the road. The tyre normally has a manufacture date on the side. From that date in which the tyre was produced, you can know when the tyre needs to be changed Within four, year, four to six years of the manufacture date, the tire is due for replacement. But what if I'm on the road and I have a flat tire, what do I do? Okay, the first step is to park the vehicle in a secure location, flat surface. Pull up the emergency handbrake, ensure that the vehicle don't run back or anything. Then you gather your tools, including a jack, lug tool, for the job. Alright. Here you have the lug. You're gonna place, yeah, you're gonna place the lug tool on that into that the current lug tool is fit perfectly and you push it down in the anti-clockwise position. Okay. And you do that for all five lugs. Okay, and it's usually five lugs? No. Some vehicle carry four, some carry five, some carry six. But for this okay. application it's five. Okay. So what else do you do after that? After you remove your lugs. You remove the complete wheel and you have it all for yourself. Then you go for your spear and place it back on here and screw on back. You tighten back your lugs. Alright, so this is what you use to tighten it back? Yeah, this is the lug tool. So you're going in the other direction? Yeah, clockwise. Turning. And you always tighten diagonal. Right, you tighten in a clockwise direction. So which one? Which one clockwise. You it can be anyone, but you can. You have to tighten it diagonal. This, 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 then this, and this. Yeah. Cross and cross. So the tire go on, the wheel go on even. And then let down the vehicle, and then you finally torque the lugs to make sure that they are correct. Where do we usually find the spare tires? 
and depending on the vehicle type, sometimes the spear is under the vehicle and the back of the trunk are inside the trunk. So it's not as simple as it seems, but it's clearly doable. It's all in a day's work, well at least for a newbie like me. But really it should take about 10 to 15 minutes to change. I can promise you there's so much value in learning to get the job done. I certainly feel accomplished. Properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe. So with June ending, it only means that we're about to step into a new month. And there are some simple life-changing hacks that we can do to kick things off the right way this July 1st. Now, these are just some suggestions, but we think they're pretty feasible. Ready? First one, meditate and set some goals. New Year goals are important, but you can also make new month goals. Now may be a good time to sit down and think about what you'd like to achieve in the coming weeks. Number two, take on a 30-day challenge. If you've been wanting to make a big change, like eating healthier, drinking more water, or picking up running again, then a new month is a great time to start. And if you've completed that 30-day challenge, you could go on to another 30 days. Number three, create a list of incompletes. Is there anything important you didn't get to last month? Well, now's a perfect time to review your to-do list and make a list of incomplete but feasible projects that you can finish in July. If you can do any of these three things today, then you're likely to have an organized and successful month of July, and we're likely to be one step closer to achieving our country's Vision 2030 goal. All good things must end just like today's Jamaica Magazine. But might I say, all good things may have a return date? Jamaica Magazine returns to your screen tomorrow at this same time, this same station. But until then, catch up with us on the JIS YouTube channel and also visit the JIS's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Keep safe. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.